Right, so in this part, we're going to be focusing on the column. And I'm going to be using some spline modeling to do that. So I'm going to go up and start creating some splines. So I'm going to start with a nice big square because that's going to be my square base. OK, and I'm just going to change that to the XZ plane so that it starts at the bottom. And the uh, NURBS I'm going to be using is the loft NURBS. It allows me to simply build this up as I go. So I shall put the rectangle in there to start with, and then I shall command drag a new one and just move that up. And that gives me a bit of a base. Now, depending on where you want to go from here, I'm going to start with a circle. As I say in other tutorials, it would be good if you had some form of reference material, you know, go away and Google and find some interesting, you know, sort of pictures of columns and things like that that are going to be helpful for you. Um, as I've made one already, I'm going to be sort of using what's in my mind. So there may come some adjustments in a bit. So maybe I just wanted to rotate that so it's not going slightly squiffy. There we go. And I'm OK with the uh, the roundness of stuff at the moment. I can change that all in a bit. Um, I just want to get the basic sort of shape going to start with. So sort of widen that out so we get this nice round sort of curvature of the base. OK, there we go. See, not too bad. We might be able to adjust some of those depending on how round and things you want this particular beast to be. Maybe you add a couple more splines in there in between to give that round a sort of bowl shape feel if you know that's what you're after when it comes to your column. That's not too bad for me. Okay and then up again and then I'm going to shrink it so that it gets to where this column is going to start. And then that's going to go up. Okay, cool. Now to do the actual column part of the column, I am going to use another spline. And the one I found that worked the most for me was the cogwheel. The thing is, because you can change, you know, its distance between its inner and its outer sort of layering like that, you can see that you get, or what will be, hopefully, a nice sort of cog layer. So. There we go. I shall put that up to where that needs to go. And I'm going to go and turn off uh, the inner part, which I don't want inlay. Turn off the center hole. There we go. There's no point to having that. So I shall put that in there and I shall need to shrink it. Now, as you can see, it hasn't exactly uh, matched that particularly well. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to go to the loft and I'm going to need to increase my mesh subdivision U. And if I just keep scrolling that up, there you go. You can see that that starts to really give that correct amount of detail. Maybe it's gone too far if I just undo a little bit. You can see that you're going to have to sort of play around with that. So maybe 250 is enough. Oops, not 20, that definitely won't be. 250 is enough. Now because of where that spline is placed, you can see we've got this nasty twisting going on. So what I'm going to need to do is just rotate that around until I get a much better look. And that should work all the way around. OK, just going to lower that down because that's where the column is going to start. And then I can bring that up. And I'm just going to make another one. OK, and then I'm going to bring that all the way up to where I want the height of my column to sort of finish. And then the easiest thing to be is to start working backwards. So using that circle, I'm going to create a copy and it will make itself go inside itself. But I shall bring it up to where it's roughly going to be needed because I want this to be the same all the way up. So I'm going to adjust this. I'm going to keep copying and pasting, just one at a time for me, so that I can adjust the heights and get the columns pretty much the way I want them to be. So what was that one? Uh, OK, and three. There we go. And then one. Okay, 
and then a circle. Okay, it's a bit thick on top, isn't it? And then we should do a rectangle, and then the last rectangle. And we've got a very basic Roman column there. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time just adjusting the heights of some of these so that they're not quite so bulbous, really, I guess, is the issue that I've got there. So it doesn't take long to adjust, and it means that you get a lot more realistic looking sort of column than we've had before. Might just increase the size of those so that we've got sort of maybe a bit of a top heavy column there. Okay, and go to the loft mode and if I clicked linear interpolation you can see that we get a much smoother well a sort of a much straighter looking lines between everything. Um, it does, however, sort of remove the round curvature that we had from that. So it's kind of up to you, depending on what it is that you want it to create. Um, you can sort of stiffen up some of these edges by creating another rectangle, say, down the bottom, and that squares that up. Maybe I'll just shrink it a tad so it's got a little bit of curvature. Same with the top one. Okay, if I was to create one there, you can see it squares itself out, and we get quite a nice looking Roman column there. Just going to adjust that cogwheel one so that we get a little bit of slant there. Okay, maybe I don't need that one. There we go. And we've got this nice Roman column there. You can adjust the amount of cogwheels. Maybe I think 20 is too much if you went for something like 15. Ooh, that's gone a little bit crazy. You may want to just increase the radius of those depending on you know what you're after really. So if you sort of increase those ones out and you can do the middle ones and I'm just gonna cheat, get rid of my other one, create a copy and then put that down so it's exactly the same. I could have adjusted them both at the same time, it would have made life easier. But there we go. And we have our Roman column. Marvellous, that's absolutely fine for me. So now, how do we make lots of them? Now, you can copy and paste, that would be fine. Um, and it's up to you whether or not you want to move them around. You can make instances of them, that's another way of doing it. But for me, to make life even easier, I'm going to use a cloner object. So I am going to go to MoGraph, okay, and then I'm going to create a cloner. Now, I held down the Alt button, which means that it creates a cloner outside of it, sort of so that it becomes its parent and instantly it means I don't have to drag and drop, which makes, you know, e being lazier even easier. Now, adjusting the cloner, I can choose the count and it's linear. So at the moment it's going straight up, which is uh, not exactly how I want this to be going. Ooh, certainly not with it going crazy like that. So I am going to choose a grid array and there we go. That creates three by three by three. So if I was to sort of expand those out, um, not quite sure what's going on there with that. So if I, we, hopefully yours isn't doing that. Um, I can create an Uber one, so it's three by three by three if I particularly wanted to, but that's way too many. So, hey, what's it, what, woo. it seems to be scaling them up, so I'm gonna undo that. What I'm gonna do, I shall do this maybe that way so that it's not, uh, Going crazy appears to be a visual thing. I don't particularly want it three high, so I'm going to turn that to one so that we've only got one and I only want two across. So if I just marry those out, there we go. And there I have my Roman columns ready to go. There we go. That wasn't too bad. That was quite fast. Not too bad at all. Um, the good thing is about the cloner is it means that if you want to increase the size of them, which I think I will do a tad, I'm going to select the top half of that and just make them slightly taller. There we go. Fine by me. So 
There we go, that was it. That was how to create a Roman column and how to create multiple versions of them very fast. In the next video, we will use the Voronoi fracture and dynamics to shatter one of these poor columns. And I shall catch you in that video.